Okay, so this interview is gonna blow you away. Chris Widener is a New York Times bestselling author. He went from being saved at 16 years old to being one of the top 50 speakers in the world. And he talks about how to find your purpose. This is such a powerful interview. You're gonna love it. Hey, 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 what is up, what's happening? Super excited for this. It's going to be powerful. So 2023 might be a good opportunity for you to find your purpose. And we have an expert on with us here. I'm going to bring him out here shortly. Super excited for this. Very cool. We're uh, just recently kind of got connected. He's been rocking and rolling for quite a while. He's got a uh, brand new book out too. We'll talk a little bit about that. But I'm excited for you to hear his story. For those of you that, for those of you who may not know his story, some of you are already saying Chris is awesome. This gentleman I'm about to bring out, he has been named one of the top 50 speakers in the world, one of the top 100 leadership speakers by Inc. Magazine, one of the top 10 sales speakers in the world by Success Magazine. He's a New York Times, Wall Street Journal best-selling author of 23 books, which have been translated into 14 languages was personally mentored by Jim Rohn, spent the last seven years of Jim's life with him and co-authored Jim's last book, 12 Pillars. How many uh, were able to read that? Drop me a comment, let me know. Uh, he was also the co-host, along with legendary motivational speaker Zig Ziglar of the television show, True Performance. Chris has spoken 2,500 times around the world, including over 500 network marketing conferences. He's the author of The Case for Network Marketing, which I, I love that title. And uh, Chris's other network, noteworthy books are The Angel Inside and The Art of Influence. His latest book is The Four Seasons, about a billionaire who finds out he has one year to live. And he lives, him and his wife, Denise, they live in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Please help me welcome Chris Widener. Chris, how are you? Hey, Ray. Thanks for having me. Appreciate Good, it. Good, man. Thanks for being on. I know that you're on a book tour. I know that you were just with Dinesh D'Souza. I know that you're super rock star. So I appreciate you coming on. It was my honor to help support your book and also introduce you to some people that may, may or may not know your story. Um, yeah. And uh, we'd love, love to hear that. So why don't we, I know, mo I think a lot of people on here know you and they're super excited to hear this, but for those that may not, tell us a little bit about your story, man. Yeah, I'll give you the, the short version. Uh, I was born uh, in the Seattle area, greater Seattle area. My dad died when I was four. Mm. Uh, he was making a lot of money. 1969, the last year he was alive, he made $90,000, but he had $30,000 with a life insurance. So my mom had to sell the house that recently sold for $3.2 million because she couldn't afford $400 a month for the mortgage payment, 1970. Mm. So that began a downward spiral in my life. My mom got into real estate. She started flipping houses long before it was popular on HGTV. And uh, I ended up living in 28 homes, uh, went to 11 different schools. I was quite mm. a handful. So my mom shipped me off to live with relatives twice, once in the fourth grade, once in the ninth grade, uh, began drugs in the sixth grade, made most of my mm. money growing up betting the horses at Long Acres Horse Track. Uh, so uh, uh, that was interesting. Kind of getting the picture here, I was going in the wrong direction. Um, uh, 10th grade year, my last day of school, my principal called me in and he said, he had a stack of papers. He said, you know what this is, Chris? And I said, what? He said, these are the written referrals to my office for you this year. And I said, oh, how many? And he said, 47 written referrals to my office this year. And that doesn't include the times I was just asked to go sit in the hallway till the end of the class. So um, ended up, I became a Christian the summer before my senior year of high school. And uh, that completely changed my life. Um, I had a good old boy from Helena, Montana, become the youth minister at a local Lutheran church. And his name was Sam. And Sam had two things that I needed at that stage of my life. Number one, size 11 cowboy boots. <laughs> I needed somebody to kick me in the rear. Uh, and I'd never really had a, a father figure. My dad yeah. uh, died when I was young. My grandpa's one ran off and never met him. I met him one time my entire life. The other died when I was young. My brother's mm -hmm. 13 years older than me. So never really had a role model, male role model. So Sam really fulfilled that. But the other thing is, is he told me that God had a purpose for my life because I was really just like most of us, you know, just sort of looking for whatever was fun, looking for wherever the action was. And so 
okay when you're a kid. It's not so okay when you're an adult. A lot of adults still live their lives that way. So right. um, he gave me the message that God had a purpose for my life. And so I gave my life to the Lord and said, whatever your will is, that's what I'll go do. And uh, that has included being a pastor for 14 years. I was a pastor of churches in New Jersey and Seattle. Uh, and then I began to write and speak full time in 2002. I started out ghost writing for John Maxwell. And from there, I ended up writing with Jim Rohn and then had my TV show in Dallas. And then the, the network wanted Zig to do a TV show. And Zig was getting older in years. And so he asked if I would co-host it. Uh, I sort of consider myself, I threw batting practice for Zig Ziglar is kind of what I did. I just threw him the ball and he smacked the ball out of the park. And that was sort of my job there. But um, it's been, a, it's been a, a crazy ride all over the world and, and uh, be able to meet the people, you know, like yourself, especially in the network marketing world. So many great leaders uh, in that industry who the traditional business world will never know of or never hear right. about, who are building, you know, uh, I, there are people in the network marketing industry who the business world will never hear of who, ha who you know, their monthly volume is $100 million a month or something like that, right. you know? You're right. And, uh, and it, it's just shocking. So and, you know, Jim Rohn was really my door into the network marketing world. Um, you know, Jim had a deal with Herbalife. And so he he got paid, but he was exclusive to Herbalife. So people would call him up and say, hey, can Jim come and speak to our group? Well, can't. So they downsold him to me. You know, normally you get upsold. I got down. They downsold to me. Well, Jim can't, but he's got this guy that's working with him. His name's Chris Widener. And so I ended up with a ton of gigs that Jim just couldn't do. Um, right. But, uh, yeah, it was, it's been great getting to know a lot of great people in this industry. Very cool. Very cool. I mean, powerful, powerful story. Um, <clears throat> what, what were the circumstances, if you don't mind me asking, what were the circumstances around like you being saved? Like, did you, you were, were you going to church and all of a sudden you no. saw the light or like you bumped into a stranger or like, like, no. what, what was that like? I had no knowledge of God. And the story I'm about to tell you will reveal. I had, I had no idea of God, church, nothing like Jesus was a swear word. That's what I heard people, you know, they'd cuss. And so <laughs> I was spending the night at one of my pot smoking buddies house. And, um, the next morning it was a Saturday night. And, and you said you were 16 or yeah, 16, 17 in that yeah. range. And his mother on Sunday morning blew the door open. She was all of about five foot 10, short little gal. And she throws the door open. She says, get up. We're going to Sunday school. Now you need to understand. She may have well have just said, she got my bada guga gaga. Like I, it made no sense to me. It was just foreign language Sunday school. And I'm like, I tried everything else. All right, we'll try Sunday school. So we went to this little Lutheran church. Uh, I think we ended up with more kids in the youth group than we did in the actual church once uh, revival kind of hit and all sorts of kids in, in our school became Christians and, and whatever. So we went off to this Sunday school and uh, it was there that I kind of just got involved. I mean, God's hand was obviously on me because there would make no sense for me to go to Sunday school or to youth group. And, and frankly, for a while, I can remember we would go to youth group drunk uh, we'd get stoned and show up for, you know, Wednesday night youth group and watch, you know, whatever film they were showing or, you know, whatever thing they were doing. And then um, uh, I just remember, you know, going on a canoe retreat. They put on a canoe retreat and I, of course, never really did a lot outdoors. I was into sports, baseball, basketball, football growing up, um, but never really did any hiking or anything. So we went up on Lake Chelan. I think there was probably 30 of us and we did a week long canoe retreat. And it was there sitting around a fire in July of 1983 that uh, I became a Christian. Another guy who was right next to me, who I went to high school with, he became a Christian. We ended up going to Bible college together and starting churches together. And then I, wow. you know, then I sent him out to start another church from our church. So we started three churches together. And now he has become the district superintendent and oversees like 150 churches. And I'm pretty sure he will end up the president of the denomination and, you know, oversee a couple thousand churches. So wow. um, that one little canoe retreat, you know, from a little tiny town in the Cascade Mountains outside Seattle. I mean, North Bend, Washington was a little timber town. I mean, it's it's big now. A lot of the suburban money has moved out there. But it was a logging town when I went to school there and it was poor. And, um, you know, so God, God plucked a whole bunch of us out of that little town and, and has sent us all over the world, missionaries and pastors and speakers and, wow. and all sorts That's of amazing. stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's really neat. 
So um, I want to I want to talk about your book and I want to talk about, you know, finding your purpose. Right. The, the title. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm curious, like if there's someone because I, I don't because I'm new. Right. Like I'm, I'm like less than three months in to give my life to Christ. And I'm Welcome to the deep, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I need a cap or something. Um, have they but, got you the uh, secret handshake yet? Because if they have not yet, yet, not yet, I'm not there yet. Um, and, you know, before we you know talk about the book and talk about finding mm-hmm. your purpose, if there's because I, I don't know how to exactly answer this question. So I, I would love to know with your experience how how best to answer it. If someone's on here and they're like, you know, I'd like to learn more. I'd like to I'd like to get closer to Christ. I'd like to kind of learn more. Like what do you do you have advice? Is it just dive into the Bible? Is it pick a church? Is it like what what are you what would be your suggestion if someone's on here right now and they they wanted to get closer? Yeah, I would probably find a community of of believers that would be welcoming and open to you. You know, if you're a woman, there's women's Bible studies around men's, there's men's groups. You know, you could go find a good church where they preach the Bible. Um, you know, I'm always amazed that people will go to a church where they don't preach the Bible, because what's the point of going to church then if, if you don't believe yeah. the, the guidebook, right? But find, uh, you know, there's there's some bigger Bible studies that are sort of independent. One's called Bible Study Fellowship uh, is a group that you could look up. There's there's lots of those online. Um, I actually have a I actually have a Bible study uh, here on Facebook. Uh, in a weird set of circumstances, I ended up with Facebook.com forward slash Bible study. It's about as simple as you could possibly get. And there's yeah. tons and tons of stuff on there as well. But um, you can pick up a, a daily study Bible or a daily devotional. They're called devotionals. And if you don't even know what that means, you can go into uh, go into a, a Bible bookstore or any bookstore, or go on Amazon and type in Bible devotional, daily devotional. And what it is, is it's usually one page uh, and it has a Bible verse at the top and then the author's um, writings. There's one by... Um, uh, uh, Billy Graham wrote one I know is a really good one. There's one called Jesus Calling, uh, which is a, a daily devotional. But there's plenty of daily devotionals. Again, if you're if you're a man, you could type in men's daily devotionals to deal a lot with those kinds of things. Women, they have, you know, women's daily devotionals. But I would right. start with a daily devotional, dig in each and every day, but then find a group of people, whether it's at a church or a women's or men's Bible study um, to tie into, because there you will find somebody who is further along than you and willing to answer questions and encourage you and and tell you how they've failed and how they made it through it and tell you how they succeeded and and get you through it too. So that's what I would do. You know, always dive into a community of faith. The Christian faith is designed to live with other people. Mm. And, you know, I know people say, Oh, I met a Christian once and he was a jerk. And well, we've all met jerky Christians, but we've all met a lot of jerky non-Christians too. That's right. (laughs) When I was, when I was a pastor, I used to say, if you ever find the perfect church, please do not go to it. You'll ruin it. You know, <laughs> none of us are perfect. And, uh, and so, but, but that's part of the way God works on us is he puts us into a group with imperfect people, because if yeah. we were all perfect, you would never need forgiveness. You wouldn't need yeah. patience. You wouldn't need love. You wouldn't need any of those things. So being in an imperfect group of people is sort of God's practice field on practicing love and forgiveness and acceptance and, you know, all those right. kinds of things. That's, that's awesome. And so what, um, finding your purpose, I mean, that's such a, it's such a big topic. It's such a, you know, big thing. Um, what are some steps toward uncovering that? What have you seen and what has helped you and and what would you suggest? Yeah. Well, in the context of, of understanding our Christian faith, I would say that it's finding out what God's purpose is for you. And this sort of deductive reasoning here, okay, God has a plan for us. The Bible is replete with verses like, you know, he he knit us together in our mother's womb. Uh, We are fearfully and wonderfully made before we were born. He knew our name. So he created us for a purpose. So sort of second deductive reasoning would be if he created us for a purpose, he probably gave us a skill set or a gifting to be able to do that. So for example, I can tell you my purpose has never been is not now, nor will it ever be singing because I am a terrible singer. And if God wanted me to be a singer, he would have given me a better singing voice, right? And so, um, but there are some things that I am good at and I'm good at speaking, which is why God has made me a speaker and why he honors when I speak um, 
people listen. And so the giftedness that God gives you is usually in line with what your purpose is going to be. So what I would suggest is go online, or if you're involved in a church, go to your pastor and ask for a spiritual gifts test. You can find them online. You can take a spiritual gifts test. You know, we take disc profiles and we take, you know, the Myers-Briggs yeah. and all those kinds of things. Well, this is designed to help you find out the spiritual gifts that you've been given. And the spiritual gifts range from the natural, like generosity is a spiritual gift. Um, and it typically is people, it doesn't have to be a rich person. It just means that you're, you're generous. Uh, hospitality is a natural gift. Uh, speaking is a natural gift. Uh, leadership is a natural gift. Then you have supernatural gifts like healing and speaking in tongues and prophecy and, and those kinds of things. But I would take a spiritual gifts test. My spiritual gifts have been the same for most of my lifetime, leadership, faith, and teaching. And so most of my giftedness um, or my giftedness is what informs most of the work that I do. So mm -hmm. I've, had a, I've had a personal mission statement for 30 years. Uh, I will use my writing and speaking skills to help people turn their potential into performance, succeed in every area of their life, and achieve their dreams. That's what God gave me to do. Uh, on this planet was use awesome. those gifts in order to, you know, do the work that he has for me to give. There's other people who their gift is generosity and they will fund all sorts of things and, and help so many different people. Hospitality. They're the one at church who's always like, we'll host it. Come to our house. And they love all to right. make food and they don't mind that there's 30 people all over. So I would say spy, find your spiritual gift and then put it into practice and start utilizing it. Powerful. And your, does your book, do you feel like your book, your, your latest book, the four seasons, does it help with that or help with, with something else? It will help with that in the sense that the book is about a billionaire who finds out he has a year left to live one year. That's it. And nothing he can do. In fact, his wife keeps saying, what can we do? And he's, the doctors have told me he's got all the money in the world. He said, they've just told me it's done. So all of a sudden, we, we all know we're going to die. And at, at our age, look, you're, you're a little younger than me, but at our age, we go, oh, I got 30 more years, 20, 30 more years. And so there's not an expediency to life. There's not an urgency to life. Right. And so we always think, oh, you know, we should plan. You know what we should do? We should plan a, um, we should plan a, uh, a vacation for our 10th anniversary. You know, you say that on your fifth anniversary and you just assume right. you don't have a 10th anniversary or, Hey, on our 25th anniversary, we should go do this. Well, that's 20 years from now. You know, who knows if you're going to be here, but now when all of a sudden you have one year left to live, bam, everything is condensed. And now that reality of death becomes a, it's right there in your face. And, and now all of a sudden every moment has meaning. You know, I always say life is precious because it ends and life is an adventure because you never know when. And so Jim Rohn and I wrote in the book, 12 Pillars, uh, you cannot determine how long you live, but you can determine how well you live. And so what happens when all of a sudden it's condensed is now it's all about living well and not living about, about living long anymore because you know it's over in a year or right. some people get three months. Uh, I had a friend just passed away. He was diagnosed on October 12th. He died on December uh, 5th. Um, less than two months. And all of a sudden, the preciousness of life becomes at the forefront and it becomes rich and it becomes meaningful. And I think that's what I really want people to get out of this book is life is to be lived and enjoyed and experienced today because there is no promise of tomorrow. Book of James says, what is your life but a mist of wind? You know, you squirt some mist out of a little aerosol thing and it, it goes out and you see it. And then I don't see it anymore. And right. that's really what our life is in the grand context of, you know, millennia. And in fact, God is outside of time. So it, you can't even measure it in millennia, uh, you know. Um, and, and our little tiny experience here on earth is so small, but it's designed to prepare us for eternity. You know, most people think of life as a, I'm going to take it back to high school math, a segment, two dots with a line in between right? That's what most of us think of our life as. But our life is really a ray. Remember what a ray is? You should know what a ray is. A ray <laughs> is a dot with a line and an arrow. Yeah, That's what life really is. Now there's a yeah. transition there. There's a transition that we think of as the other dot, 
but it's just a transition from physical life to spiritual life and eternal life. And so what we're doing here is to prepare us for eternal life. That's what life is really all about. Not this short little segment that we live here. Right. Yeah. That's so, uh, that's so powerful because, you know, you hear the, um, you know, the stories that are used like the dash, right. People talk about Mm -hmm. the dash. I'm sure you've heard that. Right. And, and the focus on the dash and, um, you know, what is, is that it, (laughs) right. Is that is just the dash? Like, you know, I, um, you know, when I started down this journey and, and started, you know, studying and really getting into faith and everything, I kind of figured out that, atheists have a ha- have to have a lot of faith <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, 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 totally. they're right and ain't nothing after like like that's me i, I remember a bible college professor telling me bible college and this was when i was in bible college he said you know the problem with evolution it takes way too much faith it takes way too much faith to believe in that and i think the same thing with atheism it just requires a lot of faith to believe yeah. that there is no you know even honest not necessarily Christian scientists, um, but but they call them uh, intellectual design. They believe in intellectual design. There's somebody we don't know who it is, but the, it's obvious there was somebody because this is a designed universe that we live in. It's not yeah. a random universe that would require way too much faith to believe that this was a random universe. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 wild. It's wild. Um, very powerful. So uh, I believe the the link, if though for those of you who want to grab the new book, is for uh, spelled out fourseasonsbook.com. Yeah. And um, so fourseasonsbook.com. It launches today. I'd love it if people would jump on over. It. And I want to tell them what, that what we're giving away: twenty hours of personal and professional development uh, audio stuff. I uh, got one called Secrets to Life and Happiness, which is a 31-day program, seven to 10 minutes a day. Wow. That comes, and it's all about finding happiness and joy. Uh, bonus number two is called the Motivation Mastery Audio Series, and it's interviews with the best motivational speakers, uh, you know, the Brian Tracys of the world and Jim Rohn and those. Uh, I have another one. Bonus number three is Made for Success in Business. It's leadership interviews with top business minds on finance, strategy, teamwork, Bonus four is the ultimate success series, which is wealth, leadership, time management. And then the last one, which is almost 11 hours, just in and of itself, extraordinary leaders, which is about uh, how to become an extraordinary leader, whether it's leading as a mom or a dad, leading as a baseball coach, leading in your network marketing business. Um, But all of that is free. If they go to fourseasonsbook.com and then buy the book, they come back and they put in their little, put in their little, um, uh, number, you know, their order number, whatever. And then it pumps out an email that sends them the link to download all the audio programs and they can put them right on their phone and, and listen to them. So yeah, there it is right there. There's all the bonuses right there to tell you all about it. Second, I hear my daughter yelling in the background. Um, all the, with all these bonuses, I mean, how much is this book? 10 grand, nine grand? No, no, no. Actually the, the, the Kindle's 99 cents. So 99 even if you don't want the book, if, if you don't even want the book, go, go drop the 99 cents and get the four or $500 worth of audio programs. But no, the book is really great. The paperback version is I think 1299. And then uh, the audible version, I don't know what that's priced at today, but uh, the paperback, awesome. it's, it's a thick book. It's three, nearly 300 pages, uh, 1299. Kindle's 99 cents and then the audio through Audible. And actually, if you don't have an Audible, as you know, you can get a free membership and, and get it for free but just by joining sure. Audible. So. Very, very cool. So fourseasonsbook.com. Definitely check that out. I look forward to, uh, I'd love to have you back, do more stuff, figure out some yeah. training stuff. And, yeah. um, but definitely uh, here on a you know, pretty special day here. Thanks. I know yeah. when, when you launch a book, you, you line up your schedule like bananas. I'm sure you got 50 more interviews and, yeah. you know, humongous million person, you know, audiences. So yeah. I appreciate you stopping on by and, and dropping some value here. And we really uh, appreciate it. Um, yeah. I appreciate you, Ray. And, and uh, and I'm excited for, even more so about your new walk in faith. And, um, yeah. and that, that's exciting because that's the most important thing. You know, you get that right and everything else takes care of itself. So uh, proud to call you not only a friend, but call you a brother. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Chris. Congrats on making it to the end of the video. I hope you got massive value from this. Feel free to subscribe. And I would highly suggest that you click that little bell bing, so that you're notified as we upload new and free content. 
Feel free to share this with someone that you think could benefit from it and just know that we really, really appreciate you. Feel free to check out the description for any kind of links or additional notes and I hope to see you in the next video.